my name is Nir Mahashwaranathan. I'm a graduate student in the neuroscience program at Stanford. I work in Surya Ganguly's lab and in Steve Backus's lab at Stanford. Oftentimes, uh, experimentally, we see like a huge variety and complexity in terms of um, different model organisms and systems and techniques and tools. And I think one thing that theory can provide is sort of a way to kind of uh, find sort of hidden principles that might be governing sort of uh, neural systems more generally across different species, different, um, different paradigms and things like that. Yeah, definitely. So a lot of the sort of influential theories, so I work in the sensory systems field, and um, a lot of the theories that sort of have guided how I think about the system I work on uh, involve um, sort of normative theories. The idea being uh, you see, you, we observe sort of different properties of these um, sensory circuits, and one thing we might ask is, um, why should we see one kind of sensory circuit over another? Like, why would evolution have shaped the neural system to, to behave one way over another? And in that case, um, theory is often very useful in answering those questions because you can sort of, from some simple first principles, argue how ought neural systems uh, work if you want to um, sort of function in some optimal way. And, and those ideas, I think, really guide how I, I, how I at least think about how sensory systems work. So they are the uh, sort of highly influential theories involve are sort of going back to the 60s and, and even earlier with Atneve and Barlow talking about um, the idea of redundancy reduction, the idea that, and oft oftentimes in a lot of natural stimuli, there's, they're highly redundant, meaning like if I look at an image, two pixels that are nearby tend to be very correlated. Um, and so maybe what, what early sensory systems are trying to do is represent those um, natural stimuli in a way such that you don't waste resources, which are sort of highly uh, um, precious energetic resources to encode those redundant inf that redundant information. Um, doing my own experiments and also talking to theorists has been like extremely valuable, both in terms of seeing how theorists um, think about problems, just the because the, the backgrounds people bring from physics and engineering and sort of computer science, information theory, all these kinds of ideas. Um, sort of are generally very useful in neuroscience and so being able to talk to people who have those kinds of backgrounds is useful. And then uh, from the experimental side, I think working with raw data kind of tethers you to reality in a way that um, uh, really grounds kind of like your expectations of what theory can and should and um, uh, provide to neuroscience. And so I think um, from as a theory, theorist work, getting to see raw data or working with raw data I think can be um, very, very illuminating. Yeah. So I would, I would say, like, again, like close collaborations, being able to like actually work, work sort of like from the data collection all the way to the to the end result.